Hello, everyone. Um, in, my, in my first discussion, uh, we looked at how to derive the money multiplier. But in today's session, we are going to look at how to solve questions on money, money multiplier. And I have some questions here that I want us to look at. So the question is, suppose currency is equal to 800 billion. And this is a question, so I wouldn't waste my time. So in the first um, instance, we've been asked to compute money multiplier. So money multiplier, the formula for finding money multiplier is equals to C plus one all over one, sorry, all over C plus R plus E. So in the question, first of all, let's look for our C. So small C is equals to, first small C equals to big C over D. And the big C was given us 800 all over 1,000, which is 0 0.8 ER is equals to excess reserve all over deposit, which is also giving us 25 all over 1,000. And this also gives you 0 0.025. And we have our <coughs> I'm assuming required reserve ratio is equal to 0 0.1. It was not given, so we are just assuming it's equal to 0 0.1. Great. Okay, so first of all, the money multiplier is equal to 1 plus, now we know the C is 0 0.8, all over 0 0.8 plus R, which is 0 0.1 plus XX reserve ratio, which was given as 0 0.025. Now, which is going to give you 1.8 or 1.946. That means your money was, which is M, is equals to 1 point, which is equals to, sorry, So the money multiplier is um, 1.946. So the next one is money supply, which is also the same as the M1 is equals to currency plus checkable deposit. In the question, our currency was given us 800 and our checkable deposit was also given us 1,000. That gives us 1,800. That gives us thousand eight hundred dollars. So the next one. So let's look at the second question. Suppose there is an unusually large OMO, a bond purchase of one thousand five hundred. What will be the impact on money supply? Assuming all other information re remain the same. Okay. So we are looking at the impact on money supply. So I'll say M equals to money multiplier multiplied by the monetary base. Monetary base, and we know the money multiply is a function of all the ratios, which remains the same. So I'll say m is equals to 1.96, yeah, 1.946. That for the monetary base, multiply by the currency is what is still the 800, and then reserve required reserve, which is 10 percent of um, the deposit, which was thousand, that means 100. And we have the excess reserve as 25. And we have additional what um a purchase of 1,500 which goes into reserves. So plus another 1,500. That means M is equals to 1.946 into brackets. So when you add up these three, that will give you 2425. That means our money supply is equals to four seven one nine six. It's okay. Great. So the next question is: so we were asked to look at the impact on the money. So previously, the money supply was currency plus deposit, but now it has increased to what? 
four seven one nine. So the next question is okay. So in the third case, the question is consider the same homo as in the second equation. This is the third question. So consider the same homo as in question two, but in this case, banks keep all proceed as excess reserves, right? So that in the same way that the five thousand five hundred euros was the question it was um. 1,500, but in, at this time, around 1,500 is going towards excess. So our excess ratio now becomes 1,500 plus the already 250 that we had, 25 that we had, all over 1,000 is going to give you 1.525 as our excess ratio, which implies our money multiplier now becomes. 1.1 1. 1 plus 0. 0.8 over 0. 0.8 plus 0. 0.1 plus 0. 0.025, which is going to give you, which is going to give you um, 0. 0.6 for so m is equals to 0. 0.74. That means our money supply is equal to monetary base. Money multiplied multiply by monetary base is now is equal to 0 0.74 into bracket. The monetary base is going to be the same, which is 800 plus 100 plus the already 25 plus the new 1005. That is from the bond. So that means our half money supply equals to. 1794.5 dollars. So what it means is that though when your reserves, your reserves increases, but you end up keeping that reserves in SX in the excess reserve, then that means you are unable to create more money. So that is why your money supply has to be reduced relative to in the situation whereby um money supply was able to increase. That is a process. In this case, so it went to four thousand seven hundred and nineteen point one six dollars, right? Because in this case, it was only part of this thousand five hundred that was kept as reserves, right? But in the in, as excess reserve, but in the second scenario, all the thousand five hundred are being kept as what excess reserve, and it limits the ability of the banks to create money. That is why the money supply had to come down. Thank you. Do not forget to subscribe to my video.